Welcome back to Arise Review. Time and again, the world turns to the United Nations for help. But all too often, that help is blocked and call it the power of no. According to U.N. bylaws, any one of the five permanent members of the Security Council can veto proposed action. Now, Amnesty International claims that sometimes members use a veto more to protect their national self-interest than to protect others in desperate need. As a result, humanitarian crises are allowed to go unchecked. That's why Amnesty International is calling for change. Uh, they urge that veto power be set aside in cases where atrocities are being committed. This would enable the U.N. to respond more quickly to prevent genocide and to aid victims of conflict. Well, Ambassador John Hirsch is currently a senior advisor at the International Peace Institute and was formerly the U.S. ambassador to Sierra Leone. Welcome to the show. It's really good to see you. Nice to see you. You don't think uh, in any stretch of the imagination, Ambassador, that any of these countries will drop the veto power. Correct. You know, the, the United States would never have joined uh, or created the United Nations without the veto because it could not give the decision making on the use of its forces or its engagement to other countries. And I think the same applies to, the, to Russia today, to China, so on. So France has made an offer to voluntarily suspend the veto. But I think this kind of misses the point. The real point being the importance of bringing the great powers together mm -hmm. in cooperation on addressing crises. There have only been two vetoes in 2014. Amnesty International has made a big to-do about this. Mm -hmm. But there have been fewer vetoes since the end of the Cold War by far than were used during the Cold War. So I don't think the veto is the issue here. You don't think it might have been the case necessarily also, say, for instance, in recent history, uh, in the genocide in Rwanda, had there been uh, um, quicker action, maybe this could have been prevented, uh, if there was uh, no issue with the veto. What, what, what are your concerns about that, if any? But there not, was no veto issue in the Rwanda genocide case. It was a, there was no resolution on the table. It was vetoed. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a lack of, of interest, lack of engagement. And in the American situation, 18 Americans had been killed in Somalia six months before the Rwanda genocide. And even though not stated this way, the United States was not going to re-engage in Rwanda. Uh, but there was no Security Council resolution which was vetoed. It was a matter of lack of willingness. Interest. Yeah, willingness. In, in, importance that was assigned to this. This was a big failure not to have interceded. And we've seen that time and time again where there perhaps is no interest uh, by industrialized nations in, in third world countries where perhaps there's no oil, there's no money, so on and so yeah. forth. We can point to all those things. But I guess my question is when it comes to the power of the veto or the lack thereof, have you seen any instance where there was a situation or human atrocities and conditions where somebody would veto uh, that to delay help and aid to a country in desperate need? Well, there was this uh, problem in Kosovo and the Balkans about 15 years ago where it was clear that the Russians who were supporting the Yugoslav government were not going to agree to a resolution immediately in the council. Mm -hmm. So the resolution was actually devised by NATO and brought to the council on Kosovo. And it was adopted. For, at that point, the Soviets stepped aside and they abstained. So they let it go through. Mm -hmm. So there were situations. And in Syria, uh, clearly, the uh, Russians were supporting Assad. Mm -hmm. So that, those are the two vetoes in 2014. The other was over Crimea. But even in the case of Syria, the council came in. They uh, have provided humanitarian access in the northern part of Syria, and they acted uh, to end the chemical weapons production in Syria. So mm -hmm. even absent a full-blown blown intervention, the council has acted. And I, I think, you know, the council has passed 2,400 resolutions since it was established, two-thirds of which are since the end of the Cold War most of which actually involved Iraq, Iran, the Middle East, and so on, but also Mali, Central African Republic, uh, Somalia. So I, I don't really think it's correct to say that the council is inert or, or unwilling to act. Of course, there are situations where we'd like to see more action. Mm -hmm. But it's not the veto. It's bringing the council members together. So you're saying basically in a sense here, in closing on this, Ambassador, that Amnesty International, their, their, their efforts here or their charges really have no teeth. 
I, I think this is very well intentioned, and I understand the frustration about inaction. Mm -hmm. But I think realistically, it's unlikely that there's going to be this voluntary giving up the veto, and it's in the charter. Right. Uh, However, I think Amnesty and others can encourage the P5 to work more closely together on finding solutions and responding. So you shouldn't just leave a Rwanda right. or a Mali to its own, to the people there. So much more can be done, but it's not the veto that's the heart of the problem. Well, we only hope they can, can work together uh, more closely. Uh, Ambassador Hirsch, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again. Pleasure to see you again. All right.